Hello everyone and welcome back to Milo Farms. Have another snowmobile video today here doing some summertime maintenance on the phaser. These are the two phasers that I picked up here a few months back from a family friend. I uh, did a video a couple weeks ago um, on doing spark plugs and today we're going to be doing a video on how to get to the steering components in the front end. Uh, this particular one has I know a loose tie rod end. Um, I'm not sure what is loose on it, but it, I know it has a loose tie rod end. And then I, it also has some loose steering components, which is just a thing that the phasers have always had. Uh, once I get in there, I'm going to be installing a kit made by a gentleman on the Totally Yamaha Four Stroke website. Um, he goes by the username of UP Bushman, and it's the UP Bushman uh, steering. Uh, upgrade for the phasers. Uh, it fits several different years starting with this 2007. Um, once we get in there I'll show you how to get to the parts and then I'm not exactly sure how to install the kit. It hasn't arrived yet in the mail but as soon as it does arrive we'll be installing it in the second half of this video. So today we're going to show how to at least get to the steering components and then we will restart the video again and continue once the kit arrives. So I've already taken everything loose, all the bolts and everything loose, um, and figured out how to get there. Um, so everything's just loose sitting back together and I'm going to show how it all comes apart. So to start with I've already removed the windshield. It has the four bolts, two on this side and two on the other side. <clears throat> then above the headlight here in the back there's two pins that are snapped into these rubber grommets. You pop those out with a screwdriver and then the headlight lifts up and pulls back towards the back of the sled on these notches and comes off. This is the headlight cover. Then you want to remove the two side covers. This one here, same on the other side. It has one screw here and a screw here and a screw here. It's the same on the other side. And then the unit just pulls forward and drops down off of these little notches right here. The one on the other side is exactly the same. Then we have the headlight, and the headlight has a screw right here, a little plastic screw that goes in that hole with a little keeper, and once the screw is removed, the keeper will pop out and the top of the headlight will come loose. Then down on the bottom, there's a screw here with a spring behind it that screws into the keeper that goes here. And then the hardest part is on the very back is a little clevis pin. So here's the screw with the spring and the little tiny clevis pin. You gotta take the clevis pin off first, then unscrew the screw and catch the spring before it falls down inside the motor area. There's one of these on each side of the headlight. Then you just pull the headlight forward and it has two wires attaching at the back, one here and one right here that hook to the back of the headlight, one to each bulb. Next, you'll wanna take this piece off here, whatever color it is on yours, in my case, it's white. There's a release down at the bottom, just a rubber strap. Pull that loose, lift it up, and it pops right off. Then the next thing you have is the airbox cover. You have a keeper right here, a keeper right here. They both twist, and the th cover opens, and then lifts right off the hinge at the bottom. Next, down here at the very bottom, you have a rubber strap. Pull that strap off and release it, and it'll just lay right there. Then you'll find three rubber plugs, one here, one here, and one here. They're just black rubber plugs that pop in. And way down inside, don't know if I can get a good angle on this, there's one of them. There's Allen screws down there. There's three of them, one there and one in each of those holes. They're way down in there, but the screws are captured so they won't fall off once you get them undone. Then up here at the top, you'll unscrew or unplug this wire right here which I believe is a temperature sensor or something for the uh, uh, sensor for the ECU. Then there's some options here. The book says to unplug these sensors and unscrew or unplug the hoses at the bottom. There's some kind of pressure sensors. Um, rather than doing that, what I've done is just undo these three screws and this whole device will just lay there. It won't go anywhere. It'll sit right there. So just take those three screws off instead. Then under here, you have a rubber hose, and then right here, straight underneath, 
there's a large rubber hose that's about three quarters of an inch. You want to release that as well. You can kind of lift this up, reach under there, and get to it. Then lastly, you'll want to remove this screw right here and this screw right here. That'll just give you a little bit of wiggle room on this. Then if you grab right here, you can just kind of lift up and slide this whole unit forward and you'll see right there that's that large rubber hose and then you have a smaller rubber hose up here that you have to release. So that shows now that you can get all the access to the intake, uh, the front of the engine, the oil filter is down there at the bottom. Right there you can get to it. Um, that's another challenge to get to the oil filter, but it only has to be changed every quite a few thousand miles. I can't remember the exact, exact number in the book, but it's easily accessible now. So then the next thing you have is this plastic cover on the front. There's a push pin here, a push pin here, and then a push pin on the bottom on each side. Those push pins come undone. I broke the bottom two, gonna have to replace those. And then you can work this panel out of here, which is kind of a challenge, but then it'll come out. So now you can see there's the steering components right there. And also down in here, the light isn't very good, but they're down in the very bottom down here. So the issue that these phasers have is the spacing right here when you twist this this piece right here has too much up and down play and then additionally back here in the back in the dark there's some plastic bushings and some metal bushings that go bad or were very sloppy from the factory and uh, Mr. UP Bushman's kit is supposed to correct that up here in the top right underneath the coolant recovery tank, there is a bolt that needs to be removed right there, which connects to the steering linkage that I've already removed and pointed towards the front so it's out of the way. Then the top bolt and the bottom bolt back in here on the radiator need to be removed so the radiator can scoot over to the side to access this bolt. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the entire front off of the sled and that's gonna allow us access to the bushings that are down in the back and also to see where our looseness is in the sled, in the front end. So there is a bolt here, a bolt right here, a bolt here and here. These are on the right-hand side of the sled and then you need to drain the oil out of the oil tank and remove this hose right here which is going to have some residual oil in it so you want to make sure you have something underneath to catch that when it comes out and then on the other side now on the left side we're going to remove this bolt this bolt this bolt and this bolt I placed a jack underneath the sled to support the front of the tunnel but not so far forward that it's onto the belly pan. It's right where the track comes out from under the bottom of the sled. And that's supporting the entire front of the sled right now. So I'm gonna remove those bolts, and then hopefully, if everything goes well, the skis, the A-arms, the shocks, and all the steering components will come completely off the front of the sled, and then we're gonna drag them over here to the workspace where we can take a look at them. Then I also discovered that there's one more bolt right behind the oil tank that needs to be removed. And to do that, you have to loosen the oil tank with the bolt at the bottom of the oil tank, and then the bolt here on the side, and then the other side of the oil tank. Then that should allow the oil tank to wiggle just enough to get to that bolt. And then there's a bolt in the same place on the other side of the sled, that'd be the left side. I also found one more bolt that I'd missed, which was on the lower front of the radiator. So the radiator actually has three bolts, one in the front, one in the top back, and one in the bottom back. Once those were all removed, then the whole entire front of the sled slid off and rolled away. So that's what it looks like without the front on it. And you can plainly see the engine, the oil filter, all of those things in there. So now's the time if you need to change the oil filter to do that. 
So here is the front of the sled. Inside now you can plainly see the bushings and where the problem is. Right here, all the slop. But everything else looks good. I found my problem that was my loose tie rod end. It was simply just this nut right here had worked loose, so there was a little bit of slop in that. But I tightened that all up. Everything else looks good in here. I don't see anything else that's loose other than just the standard kit that we're going to put in there. And we'll go from there. So now we're just waiting for the kit to arrive in the mail. And when it does, we'll continue the video. Okay, so the kit has arrived. And what I've already done is I've taken apart the steering section that I just showed that had the looseness in it. There was a bolt that looked like this that was up through the bottom of this hole and then it had a nut and then it had the plastic washers on it. So these are the worn out plastic washers. You can see in comparison the one on the right is the original and the one on the left is the UP Bushman replacement. You can see it's a lot heavier duty. Uh, the metal part is a lot more substantial. And then the plastic part that's black there is just basically a spacer and uh, what it kind of thrusts back and forth on. But the important part is that metal, I think it's the stainless steel on the UP Bushman one. So again, this kit that we're gonna be installing came from a gentleman with the username of UP Bushman, and it is uh, found on the Totally Yamaha Four Stroke Forum. I'll put a link in the description. Um, so there's the instructions that come with it, and all of his uh, parts are labeled as to where they go. Looks like it'll be real easy to put together, so I think it's gonna be a great kit. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that put together, and I'll kinda show a little video of what I'm gonna do there. And then it shows the instructions, you tighten it down to 27 foot-pounds, so we'll see how that goes. Okay, so I cleaned up the area here, and the two bushings are in now, here and here. Um, they're put pretty much centered. They were a very tight fit, particularly this one on the left. I really had to work it in there um, and put a little bit of lubrication on it to get it to slide down in there, because it was very tight. And compared to the original ones, um, it is going to tighten things up a whole bunch compared to those really sloppy originals. So already I can see I think this is going to turn out real well. So the next thing I'm going to do is get the plastic washers. I'm not sure what the material is, but the plastic washer here, there's one is going to go on the top here, same on the other side, and then underneath one here and one here. And then I got to get the bolts back up through the bottom. Okay, so I got both the bolts up through the bottom here. And then underneath, between the part that goes horizontally here, there's a steel washer that looks just like this one. Then you have the plastic UP Bushman bushing. Then you have the steel bushing that goes inside, another plastic bushing here, and then the steel washer on top, and then the nut goes on here. One thing I forgot to mention, while I had this all apart, I took the opportunity to clean all these pivot points in here really well and check them for tightness. I also greased up here at the top and um, there's a roller bearing inside of there. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten these two bolts back up and then I also checked the tightness on my tie rod ends here and over here. I found both those to be slightly loose as well so I tightened those up. Everything looks good under here. Uh, definitely took a whole lot of the slop out of it. Um, now we're going to move up to here and put on the next three uh, plastic washers that go up here. So as I said before, I went ahead and cleaned this up, uh, re-greased this uh, roller bearing that's inside of here, and got it all put back together. So now we're going to put the next washers on. So these two washers are labeled lower. They both go on here. They push down over this somewhat tight. And so I'm going to go ahead and put both those on, and then the next piece, I will show that in just a second. So I had a little battle getting this all back together. Um, ended up having to re-loosen these two screws here to get enough up and down play in this shaft right here to get these two washers underneath here on and then the washer here, the plastic washer, with this circlip on it. Um, worked out well. I got it on there. I got it all tightened up and everything was good and then just went back and re-tightened these. 
So the front end is much tighter. It's hard to tell without you know being able to have the handlebars connected to it since we're still sitting here on the floor. But so far I'm seeing what looks to be really good. And you want all these things to be extremely tight because that was the problem with the original is there was too much slop in it. So you want it to be as tight as possible right now and it'll loosen up as soon as you start using it. So now we're gonna go ahead and start putting the front end back on the machine. And I'm not gonna show that whole process because I showed how it all came apart. And then we will see it once it's all back together and compare the slop that we had before. Okay, so back to kind of recap the before. This is what we had before when we first started slop wise. I'd say that's at least a inch, probably better than that. This is what we started with right here. Okay, so we got the front end put back on and we got the oil put back in the machine. Um, got the radiator put back on, got all the bolts tightened up around the edges. Um, just kind of enough, I wanted to try to start it and just make sure that the uh, everything runs and works like it's supposed to before I bury everything again, because we did have this thing pretty torn apart. Um, what I also did while I had the front end off is there was a, uh, I don't know if it was a service bulletin or if it was just a common problem or what it was, but the starters on these, which are right under the motor, directly available once you take the front end off like we had it, um, the starter bolts were not real tight or were not loctited from the factory and they can work loose and they can uh, cause the starter to come apart and or fail um, on the trail. And so I went ahead and I checked those, tightened them up. They were a little loose, nothing serious, but I loctited them just to make sure. Um, also went ahead, changed the oil filter, did all that while I had it apart. Looked everything over real well, didn't see anything else wrong while I was in there. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll show what the after looks like on the handlebars. And you can see right here, that's all the play we have. And I can look down inside and I can see that that's just tie rod ends that are doing that. And there's so many tie rod ends on this that can wear. And if every one of them has, say, you know, a millimeter of slop in it, if even that, even a few thousandths of an inch of slop, um, all that adds up up here on the handlebars and you have quite a bit of slop. But for right now, that's where we're going to stop with the, uh, the repairs on this because I think everything else is really in good shape. And maybe down the road, if we have another tie rod end or something here or there that needs replaced, we'll do that. But nothing serious. Um, but overall, very happy with the kit so far. It doesn't really stiffen up the steering more so than what you'd expect. I mean, uh, right now it's sitting on these uh, dollies underneath the front wheels but uh, really didn't tighten the steering up un unusually, and I'd imagine once it's ridden, it'll, it'll start to lighten up a little bit more even once it kind of breaks in. But down here in the bottom, again, I know you can't see it because it's dark down there where we had all that slop before, that slop is zero. Um, so the UP Bushman uh, steering kit did a great job. Very happy with it. Again, you can get that kit if you go to the Totally Yamaha four-stroke uh, website. Um, down at the bottom of this page, I'll put a link to the, the page where you can find the information to order one if you'd like to. You just email the guy and PayPal him and he'll send it to you. I got mine in about a week. Um, real easy. I've heard that if he doesn't get back to you right away, you'll, uh, he's just busy and he'll get back to you within a few days and haven't heard any complaints at all. So we'll give an update down the road on this and see how it goes. When we get some snow, it's still early in the summer and we have a long ways until we get some snow. So we're trying to get all the work done on these. I think this is really going to be the last uh, snowmobile video we have until we get uh, get into winter. And then we're going to try to do quite a bit of videos of different places that we go. So again, real happy with the kit. And uh, we'll see you next time here on Milo Farms. Please like, comment, and subscribe.